Yo, I'm Drunky. I'm The Flood. And welcome to the Fortnite update where we talk about all the news, esports, and patch notes related to Fortnite. This is episode 34 of the podcast. It's May 2nd. Let's start the show. All right, Flood. So, uh, you know, I, I guess we're going to get into why we missed last week's episode, but yeah, uh, we will. You know, we will. We kind of we'll skipped over it. a patch. Yeah, we're going to talk about that later. But there is a reason that we kind of like we, we meant to record. We, we, both we had here. a reason. We, we were ready to go. We were ready and to then go. we saw some news and yeah, it's a thing. We'll we, were lo- we were looking just like this. Flood had his like beanie on. I had my hat on. We looked just like this. Mm-hmm. And like we said, we have to postpone. We're so like, now we're should here. Should we postpone? I'm like, I think we have to postpone. And then we did. And yeah. now we're here. Now it's one we'll week talk later. About it. We'll get to that. You'll, you'll yeah. find out soon why that so happened. Let's talk about the patch that we missed last week. Patch mm-hmm. 8.5. The big thing in patch 8.5. Limited time mode. In game, in game came out. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, uh, but now everyone's seen that, so spoilers friendly. Just kidding, no, just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be good. I'll be good. All right, so the limited time mode in game. I think most of us have had time to play it. It pits uh, Thanos and the Shatari versus uh, the Avengers. You can mm-hmm. play as the Shatari. You have a kind of grenade launcher type of item, also a you know AR Regular blaster, type, a blaster. Thanos, Jetpack. we know how to play. If you're on the Avengers, you get the Iron Man gloves, Thor Stormbreaker, which is a hammer. Uh, Hawkeye's bow and arrow and Captain America's shield Mm -hmm. and you fight each other in this epic massive it will never get boring type of game mode yeah like it's not possible it's endless fun could not stop the mile a minute fun all the time constant fun from beginning to end endless infinity fun for forever and beyond stones really they should just really cancel the rest of Fortnite and just have end game and I think everyone would just be happier honestly yeah so I guess my first question is uh how many games of end game did you play before your uh you know Bored out of your mind. Two. Two games, really? I think okay. it was two. I think it took two games, maybe three. I don't remember. Um, okay, so the first time that you pick up the Captain America shield and you're running a little faster and you jump a little yeah, higher yeah. and you throw the shield and it bounces and you're I'm like, ah, this is awesome. And then, you know, got my Iron Man girl. I'm like, ah, this is awesome. And then, you know, and the bow with the, with the grapple on it. Like, oh. it's got the right click as a grapple on the bow. Yeah. And there's no fall damage at all in this whole mode. Just the animation where, like, your legs stick out in front of you while you're grappling. Like, you're doing that, like, little karate Dude, kick thing. So Dude. cool so Good. cool so at first this is happening and i'm like this is the coolest thing ever and then playing as a char it's like oh this isn't bad i get it this is kind of neat yeah um but like overall it's just a meat grinder man it's a meat grinder i think kids out there are gonna love it i think like eight-year-olds are probably losing their goddamn minds having the blast i get to be captain America. like it's fun like yeah there's mm-hmm. a, un like unmitigated stylistically it's interesting and fun and the way that they implemented the the different hero weapons was fun and really cool. Like I love throwing Stormbreaker and and hammering down. Yes. It. It's cool. It's fun. But the game itself is just a meat grinder of boredom, man. And it like really... the only reason I did it is for the challenges. Like I'm gonna do those challenges so I can get my free glider and then I'm done, man. I'm done. Dude, it's the only reason I did it. Uh, I I think it's kind of a symptom of the big game modes inside of Fortnite. I don't think any of the big game modes are really that fun. It's like you said, it's a meat grinder. Um, yeah. I, I don't feel I don't ever feel like I did anything satisfactory to like win this match for my team. There's just too much going on. I'm just not important enough inside of it. And it's really just mechanically how fun can it be? And it's like kind of you said, when you're Cat America's shield, when you're throwing it, it feels good. Like their yeah. animate animation team knocked out of the park. Like they have all like the main, you know. Like kind of how you overarch your back as like Captain America when you throw the oh, yeah. shield. It's like, super fun. And you move a little bit faster yeah. and that feels good. Like they, yep. they, they, they nailed all that kind of stuff. But like if this was the battle royale where it was one of like one versus everyone, mm-hmm. and it, that would be pretty fun to have some of these weapons. But they're yes. also like it's clearly designed for a not only super casuals and or kids because everything has auto aim. That Captain America shield does not miss, bro. No. The, the, Iron Man with the gloves, they do not miss. Like, if you're kind of nearby, it hits. It hits. Like, it's a joke. Like, it's the not. The Stormbreaker axe, I think the hitbox no on it is, like, four times wider than the actual axe. Bro. I'm it's like, wow. so silly, bro. Like, the, the shots I'm hitting with that, I'm just laughing. Like, I'm just giggling yeah. to myself. The only fun one is kind of the bow because it's kind of hard. And yeah. so, and I like. I like grappling around and shooting the bow. So that's fun from like a kind of sort of skill perspective, Mm -hmm. but like it's not real life. (laughs) No. And I just got this thing where I think about Epic, right? And I think about what Epic does really well. Epic builds some of the best mechanics out of any development studio. Like the Fortnite build system is great. The Captain America shield is great. Like everything you do mechanically, like it's, they nail it. 
And then when it comes to like designing a game or like yeah. a game mode, rather, they just feel like they kind of drop the ball because I don't rules of the game. That's where yes, they feel. Yeah, nothing yeah. ever feels satisfying. And even like they they didn't invent battle royales. They took a game mode and applied their mechanics to it. And it's like, this is really good. And like, I would love to know what their numbers show for people like if they've got numbers on this i want to know like oh, but lots of people are playing it but are they playing it just to get the thing like yeah. once you've unlocked the glider then track those people because i feel like it's gonna go like oh lots of people are playing lots of people are playing it you know what I, I mean like i think that's how that's gonna agree. go but i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe the casuals are loving it i don't know i yeah. feel like kids probably love it like i feel oh, like yeah. kids running home from school and they get to play against Thanos like they're probably losing their minds like that's fun like imagine being a kid playing an end game going to see the movie then playing more end game sure. with your friend like that's a blast like that's it is it's a blast. fun I get it it's cute it's an add on cool it is a blast Good job. But like I, I just, think the old Thanos mode was better though I agree with that I was just gonna say that like I have not been able to play Thanos since this new mode came out I just can't do it um everyone gets to the stones before me I'm never Dude, the I'm last bad one at it. I've been Thanos a couple times I'm bad at Dude, it I can't I just, I can't get it, man. But I, I definitely think the last Thanos mode was a lot funner. And I wish they would just like done that and then just at, gave us the Avengers items to use, too. It's like it's just that stuff is fun. The big game mode really took it away from me, man. Yeah, I've never liked 50 v 50 type modes. I don't know. They've always been hollow for me. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, let's move on to the weapons and items of patch 8.5. No new items have been added to the game, but they did uh, change some a big, a big mechanic hmm. the hold the swap functionality has now been confirmed upon releasing the use button rather than initially pressing this should help accidentally swapping i don't know if you've noticed in the game but the way you have picked up guns for the past eight se seasons is completely different now we're in a whole new type of fortnite on drops and like when you're landing in pois and trying to pick up guns before other people um big yikes for me man huge yikes yeah, I'm still not used to it 100%. Like, it's it's just different. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It just feels weird. It feels super clunky, and it's it it's one weird. thing early in POIs, but if you get to these, like, late game um, situations, like in the competitive modes, where you really need to pick up that item on the fly, like, I really need that AR, oof. It's, it's and I was having rough. issues with my auto pickup. Like, I had the auto pickup thing for the longest time because it was mm -hmm. useful on fighting for a chest right off the hop, right? Because yeah. you could just run over and maybe get it first. Um, and I, between that and some other stuff, like, I keep accidentally picking up the wrong thing. And, like, it keeps, like, dropping. Like, I've dropped my AR to pick up something that I wanted in my other slot, like a healing yeah. slot by accident. I'm like, what the heck is... Like, and it feels unintuitive. Like, it doesn't feel like it's working correctly. You feel like you're going crazy. Like, like am, am I making the mistakes? Like, am I just a gamer who sucks at gaming now? It yeah, is, it's, it's, it's so just a, weird, it's a mind man. mess, you know? Dude, nothing know. will mess with, like, your mind or muscle memory more than Epic at this point. Because they, oh, take, they take systems that have been the same for, like, ever, like, a full year. And now they're different. And you're just like, all right, that's gone. Okay. And I mean, if it ultimately it makes the game better and I just have to get used to it, I guess that's good. But, like son of a gun <laughs> wow well, see that's what I, the swap mechanic is why they made this change because the swap mechanic was poorly implemented it felt really weird but like i learned that system i was like all right i really focused on like what i gotta do to make sure this swaps right and i stopped doing weird stuff i learned it and then they just like pull the rug out from underneath me like everything's different now there you go i'm really hoping that they figure out the or I, i'm hoping that like either i get used to it or they streamline it in a way that it just feels better again that'd be yeah. good but I, just, I mean, I'm not struggling as much this week, to be fair. Like last week when that was new, I was struggling a little bit. I feel like I'm getting my, I must be just getting used to it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm definitely getting used to it. it. more. It's just like when I have to quick pick something up, like if I'm I'm more used to like holding that button down to make sure I pick it up. Now it's like if I don't release it, I don't pick it up. And it's just. Yeah, I'm, I've done that a few times where I'm like holding it. I'm like, why, 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 what? Oh, OK, yeah, I get it. Yep. <laughs> I'm a goof. But like, right. yeah, uh, I think that's all that was in patch 8.5 It was pretty like patched so let's move on to patch 8.51 <laughs> which is a much heavier patch so a much many things so much to discuss <laughs> just that little extra like second you know fraction whatever you call it uh, uh -huh. not, or decimal uh the shadow bomb has been introduced in patch 8.51 the shadow bomb shrouds yourself in a shadow briefly becoming invisible to enemies six second duration users become more visible as others near the end of the or two others at the end of the effect Increase your movement speed. It provides the ability to double jump and wall jump. And players are unable to attack, build, or loot while under the effects of the Shadow Bomb. This is an uncommon grenade. It can hold up to a maximum of six. It can be found from floor loot chests, supply drops, and supply llamas. 
the shadow bomb. What are your thoughts? I know you played a little bit today. Uh, what do you think about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've only had a few. Uh, or no, I added a bunch of games, actually, now that I think about it. Um, you can only carry it in stacks of six, which is good. It's a, oh, Okay, this is one of those things where I'm having fun with it as a movement mechanic, but I think you even pointed out anything that's fun in Fortnite turns <laughs> evil quickly, and I yes. think that that's 100% the case. Like, I think as soon as people figure out the best ways to abuse this thing, it will be rampant. Um, but it, it seems like it's loud. Like I've had someone come at me with the first time when one of my first games, I hadn't seen one yet. The guy's coming at me. I heard, I was like, Oh God, it's an invisible guy. It's going to be an invisible guy. And I like started <laughs> building up. I put a tra- trap down. I was like, okay, something's going on. I didn't know exactly what was where he was, but I, you know, you know, something's going on and you can kind of defend yourself in my head. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think it's that overpowered. Plus it's not like the shadow stones where I could come out of it early. I'm forced mm. to stay in it. So that kind of screwed me over a couple times. Cause I was about to go up sneak behind someone and, and pump them in the back of the head with a shotgun and they knew i was there a like he just turned around he's like yeah you're there idiot like <laughs> oh, oh okay i guess this is what's happening now like i feel dumb this is not a surprise but the movement on it is nuts mm-hmm. double jumps and wall jumps are always fun this was proven back in mega man versus mega man x when they add these walmart like the slides the wall jump that shit is fun in every hey, way to age us fun way ever. to age us a little bit Whatever, to the younger old, audience. okay <laughs> I mean, uh, that's what I read in the history books, but like, I love wall jumping and I love double jumping, but it might be way too powerful. I kind of wish that there was like a wall jump mechanic just in regular Fortnite now. Like that could be, that could be interesting. It could be interesting. Uh, and maybe this is like them maybe introducing that mechanic. I haven't played Fortnite today, so I haven't seen, I've been able to use it for myself. But I have been watching some other people and it seems pretty broken. You can uh, infinitely wall jump while you're using this. And not come out of shadow form seems to be a bug that's going on. That never that well, it's not a bug. Like the timer doesn't hit catch when you're like falling or whatever. Uh-huh. So that that way you can like jump off of a mountain and live, which is great. I like that. Sure. But like there's so few situations where you can infinitely wall jump. Like that does like maybe there's some spots until the towers. Running up the side of a mountain. But you can't wall jump if it's on that grade. Like you're not going to get a wall uh, jump off that. So okay. you can just kind of balance. The timer's really fast. I found like there must be a few weird situations where that is the case that I'm yeah. not aware of or haven't found yet because I didn't look up like weird stuff that people have found out already. So maybe there's some weird spots and maybe tilted would be a good spot for that like in an alleyway. Yeah. But that's got to be so rare, honestly. Like I don't see that as a real legitimate problem. Oh, now we finally have a way to scale Polar Peak <laughs> without <laughs> yeah. having to build because that thing's huge. Um, another thing, there's already a bug in the game where if someone's using a shadow stone and they get downed, if you revive them, they stay in shadow form, but they can build and shoot and play oh, normally. Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. So this is yet again. They what I find interesting about this is it's yet again they made something that was in the environment into an item. Yeah. So now I'm wondering if we're gonna get item based cannons in the future or what's gonna <laughs> happen. Like you know what I mean? Like next season, do we get itemized cannons? What, what, what how does that work? Or like like those volcano vents? Do we get those? What's gonna happen? Oh next yeah. Season? You know what I, I mean? would love <laughs> a nice backpack where you can just use Portable that as a vent. Like, you know? I don't. Yeah. That's how they're gonna bring back the jetpack. It's just gonna be a water cannon like it was. You know, Mario uh, uh, Sunshine all over uh, again. Oh, dude, Mario Sunshine. Was fun, man. It's all right. It was underrated. Under, I think it was overrated. Underloved. No, Mario Sunshine. No one used way that system. Overrated, bro. Way That's overrated. A good game. Get out of here. Whatever. I'm staying right where I am. All right. I'm fine. I host this show too. Okay, okay, okay. okay. See how this. All right. So that's really it for uh, patch 8.1. It had a bunch of other stuff like save the world and creative that we're not really concerned with here. Um, yeah, so I'm eager to see where Shadow Stones go, by the way. Sorry, just before that ends, yeah. I just want to say I'm really excited to see where that goes. Like, if you guys have thoughts on it, I really want to know because I think I want to see where they get used in the competitive scene because I think that's where things get. That's always where you find it out definitely... how, like, real players use shit because I'm just a dork. Like, I'm running around and then I'm loving bouncing around. I think it's fun. But, like, and it's a, as a movement mechanic to cross paths and, like, double jump up to things. Mm-hmm. It's super great, super fun. But I want to see how people now abuse it because the comp scene will abuse it. They'll yeah. figure out how to, like, really manipulate that. And that's what I'm I'm interested to see it definitely feels like it's already going to be comp meta like just off the bat like why aren't you going to pick this up you're going to be able to rotate with it and no one's going to be able to really see you because like you can hear it like you said but at distance it's going to be hard everyone's moving yeah. um i'm pretty interested i i can't wait for the moment that i pop out of the baller and i shadow grenade myself jokes on everyone else now find you me. can shadow grenade midair by the way too i impulse myself oh my and then God. shadow grenaded do you while have I was to, being impulsed. It doesn't really work great. Like, it's okay, but... Do you have to, like, throw the grenade at the ground and, like, expose on you and then you shadow you, form? You just throw... Like, that, you just automatically throw it to the ground. Okay, so it's less of it's less of a grenade, more like kind of like a rift, I guess? Yeah, it works a lot more like a rift. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about a few other things that are going inside the game right now, going on. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the volcano uh, or the runes around the map have been slowly working their way to Loot Lake. 
Yes. Uh, they are rumored to trigger once they all reach it. There's going to be an event where we decide as a community what item that we want unvaulted from the past. If you go to the lake, you can look on the screens and there's kind of like these weird blueprint looking uh, pictures on the screens of all these unvaulted items. Yes. The items involved in this, the sword, the infinity <sighs> sword. Yep. The attack SMG, yep. the drum gun, mm-hmm. the plane mm-hmm. and the bounce pad are all rumored to be part of this vote. Mm-hmm. And from all the early indicators of people doing external polls outside of Fortnite, you know, like the big like Fortnite BR news and all these like Instagram feeds and all these Twitter, uh, they're doing all these types of polls. And the clear winner, not just running away with like the majority of the votes, but like 50% of the votes has typically been the drum gun so far. Uh, before yep. we get into like which one we would unvault, what do you think about this idea of a kind of like, mob rules uh this is what the community wants so this is what the game gets type of development that's not development (laughs) that's not game development that is not leadership yeah that's not good it's a terrible freaking decision like this is like if you oh you made a game with a gaming community have you ever seen a game community decide anything it's the ultimate troll fest ever and none of them know what's best for them none of us i don't know what's best for me as a gamer you're supposed to tell me you freak what what like what are they doing it's absolutely bonkers it's and that fucking if the drum gun sorry for swearing if the drum gun comes back i'm probably uninstalling yeah are you kidding me it is so weird to me because every one of these More items seasons of the freaking game. Like it, every one of these items has like been decided by Epic to be overpowered and not good for their game. But for some reason, they all seem to be like, oh, these all could come back. Uh, the drum gun being the worst offender, the planes being up there. But I don't think the community would stand for planes coming back, honestly. But you're right. Like, at least the bad players know that the planes are bad. At least bad players yeah. know that planes are bad. Bad players still liked drum guns, though. Bad players love drum guns because they could hit shots because there were so many shots that eventually the bloom would hit. Are yep. you kidding me? It's such a bad weapon. It's such a bad weapon. Dude, oh. I remember I remember the days like I we were we were both run. Pro, pro, I know I would. I don't know about you, but I would run three drum guns. I would not need another gun. I would run. Why would three you drum ever guns. run anything but the drum gun? It was the perfect weapon. It was way too good. Like you, if yep. you didn't run a drum gun you were being ridiculous so of course you like the drum gun as again a good player a bad player it doesn't matter what kind of player you are you run the drum gun do you know what that is that's a terrible meta that means a badly designed <laughs> game that's a game where none of your other guns even freaking matter like that's so badly designed it's obscene and now you're going to give us the potential to bring it back because the bad players want it back because they can't hit shots with guns to take skill get out of my face yeah and i'm right there with you i think if the drum gun is the thing that wins this vote and they bring it back like as it used to be without any kind of nerf ring kind but like it feels like it's time to wrap it up on Fortnite because I think I'm uninstalling that day if that happens. Like you know, I'm done. We're already losing to siphon mode because the more casual players don't really want it, even though it's a much funner version of Fortnite for people oh, who know how to play. God. Bring the drum gun back is just another indication. It's like, why are you guys even playing? Like all you mid level players, SMG, why are you tell. even playing? Why are you even playing it? Because the people who are who are like falling behind in Fortnite are not the professional pros because they'll figure out and abuse it. They're really good at this game. The casual players are getting all this stuff given to them. But like the mid-level players are like, okay, now I have to use a drum gun. And like, it just, it's not satisfying. And mm. I think more than anything else, the mid-level players want a satisfying game. I just, I, I'm scared, man. I'm even scared for the TAC SMG because everyone loved it and I loved it. But that's mm. an overpowered gun too, bro. Like that thing uh, I was going to say the TAC SMG, I'll probably still keep playing Fortnite at least. Yeah. But that of all the options, the TAC SMG is bearable. Mm-hmm. Jump pad, bounce pads would be fun. I'm yeah, down with great. that. Infinity Blade. Now, if the Infinity Blade comes back, here's my question about the Infinity Blade. Yeah. Is it just in like treasure map chests? Is it back Ooh. on the block? Is there only one of them per map? How does the Infinity Blade come back if it comes back? I'll be honest. That's for interesting it. to me. I'm voting for the Infinity Blade. I, I know you I'm voting are. for this it. This is what I'm saying, Epic. People are trolls. Why are yeah. you doing this, Epic? Why are you getting like, to the trolls? The game's going downhill, and if like we're going down, sugar, we're going down swinging. Give me that Infinity Blade, <laughs> and I'm taking out bills. I'm, I'm farming mats. It doesn't matter. Like I just want that Infinity Blade back. If this is gonna oh. be my, if this can be my last season with the game, I just wanted to be go up in flames, bro. I want to be sitting there with the coffee. You know, surrounded in flames, like this is fine. This is nice. This is the Fortnite I want to remember. 
Oh my god, it's so bad. I'm it's so craziest. nervous about this vote, man. I'm hoping this is even if they do do this vote, I hope it's like you, we get it back for like a day or something. Like I don't know, maybe the vote <laughs> is for, for a the day event. for like memeing. You know, yeah. like it, I don't know, man. I'm so nervous about this. It's so nerve wracking. Uh, um, what do you think about it as like an event in game? This is, I think, the first in game poll on a like a big game. I'm sure there's been, you know, like Second Life or something's done something like this. Yeah, I'm sure lots of games have done polls and, and votes and stuff. I'm sure that that exists, but like I'm hoping it was for more reasonable things. I don't know, like everything in Fortnite, the, all the things that are available that are for this vote are all like cataclysmic changes. Like each yeah. one of these things, again, the TAC SMG maybe being the most minor and maybe the bounce pads especially at this point because there's so many other movement mechanics at this yeah. point that it doesn't matter as much so those two are like the bounce pads at least would be fun and everyone's wanted them back for a thousand seasons so get just give them to us man like i'm down the bounce with that pads, like they just they allow you to be more aggressive you know what i mean you can you, you can go faster but it's not going to give you an advantage over anybody like the grappler would let you get up to the high ground with a bounce yeah. pad like there's not you can maneuver to the high ground, but yeah. it was there, there was something to it. Like there was a little yeah. bit of skill involved. It was a little bit of work. They were fun. They were fun because mm. they felt satisfying to use because when you successfully did something with a bounce pad and like bounced and sniped or something, you're like, yep. yeah, like you feel good. Like I and I don't. So I'm down with those. Those are fun. Everything else is a nightmare. Every, uh, this is a nightmare. I'm so scared. I'm so scared of that. <laughs> I'm terrified. But the All other right. thing, like, so another thing related to the casuals, by the way, I don't And this wasn't mentioned in any of either of the updates is we got the 16 player mode. We haven't talked about that. Oh, I haven't even played with it. Have you? Yeah, no, I haven't either. But you can now have 16 people in your party. That's interesting, man. Um, I kind of like that idea. I think it sets up some cool opportunities for the community. I think like, it's interesting for custom potential for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or creative mode, rather. <clears throat> sure. Because if I'm playing Zone Wars or something with a community, now I can actually have them in my party, which means I can kick people who are trolling, which is <laughs> great. And honestly, no, that's the biggest issue. Like with customs yeah, right now sure. and creative modes is that I have so little control as the host. And as the host, I need more control. I need to be the one who starts the game. And I can't do that in a creative mode right now. Yeah. Right. Unless uh, yeah. it's my own made map, which is 100 percent. That's done. I need to be able to control that and control the pace of the game as the host. So I'm excited about the idea that now I control the party at the very least. And I think it speaks again to make again, maybe casual players, the idea that it becomes a community environment. Now, every, imagine if you were just a buddy who had only had people who are your good friends on your list. You can just have open party, man, for your friends yep. and they could just jump in and start voice chatting with you. I think that's really good for the game in terms of the casual community. I think it's awesome. I think it's really, really cool. Yeah, I do like that, too. I also love the idea of being able to run 16 versus 16 with like, let's say you got a group of 16 people in your community and I got a group of 16 people in my community. Now we can go up against each other in a big battle format and customs where it's like the drunkies versus the floods and yeah, like who yeah, comes yeah. out on top. Like I love that idea. The potential's there. Um, I think that they implemented this. I think we're going to get some uh, regional uh, bouts coming up at Worlds. I think there's going to be like North Americans versus like the Europeans. Like I think there's some cool things there's that are going to be able to There's a lot of fun done. potential with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm excited I about love that. that. And also, again, once again, I think we talked about this last episode, but I want to reiterate. And one of the number one things I think Epic really needs to do is get on their customs game, man. Customs were so much like I've had a lot of fun with them, but I have to implement a bot system to join. I have to like make up rules and it's an honor system. And then I have to be able to ban people like give me toggle switches and sliders. I want to be able to turn siphon on and off. I want to be able to turn how much siphon I want to have a hundred percent siphon if yep. I want it. You know what I mean? Give me toggle switches to change the rules of the game and, and control the ins, ins and outs of it. Make it a better system because customs all that could available. be a huge future for you guys. All that is available and creative too. It's just like, let us do it inside the BR too. Like, why don't you just give us a creative map? That's the BR Island. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, throw us a bone there, here. It, like, there's so many pieces there that just need to be brought together. Like, they have all the pieces. Please bring them together. Yes, 100%. It, it's so, it's so, it has so much potential to be like what keeps Fortnite going for years and years and years and years to come. Outside Absolutely. of the actual BR experience, which is obviously fluctuating of like in terms of its popularity and the the competitive scene and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But creative could keep people interested in Fortnite infinitely. Yeah. It, anything that like keeps people together gives longevity like Minecraft. You could have like a 16 person server. People could go in and out throughout the day. That's how these rolling groups could be going. And you're right on the money about that. But, like I didn't even think about that. Just having an open party for people on your friends list. So like you could have eight people, someone else jumps in the party and like you just keep the. You so just keep I had a, I act the, my first implementation of this is I ended up I was going to duo with a buddy 
or, and I, I forgot that I had open party on because I was doing something with creative mode the other day mm -hmm. I, with you. So I had open party on by accident. I was with someone else. We joined a game and then all of a sudden, like three or four kids joined our party. I'm in a, a game as a duo, but these other kids just joined the party. So all of a sudden they're in my voice chat. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell? How did <laughs> what? I didn't even understand it, but they were able to open join my party while I'm in a game with someone else. If I wasn't a streamer, that would be that's fascinating. With it was yeah. just like my buddies on my friends list. That's a whole other ball game. That's yep. really neat. Like it, it again, it, it reinforces the idea of Fortnite as a platform, not only a game but also like a platform in a community area. Because it, it's not like WoW where you can all just meet in you know um, sure. Iron Forge or whatever the heck they're all called. I don't. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm out of the. I'm out of the. No, it's Iron Forge. You're good. You know I'd like mean? them to add like another addition to the friends list where I could denote people like us, like a. I don't know, like a VIP in my friends list who are able to just like openly join my stuff, you know, because we all have a lot of people on our friends list now, but there's only certain people that like you are comfortable with jumping in and out of your party no matter what. Right. Well, and for me to run creatives, I have to have them on my friends list. So like yeah. I had to I've got a ton of people I don't know on my friends list now as a streamer. And I get it. You're not going to cater strictly to yeah. streamers. I'm comfortable with that. But that's why we need a good creator mode where we can toggle switches and shit like give it to yep. us, please. <laughs> My community right. loves it. They lose their mind when I run customs, man. I know. Who wouldn't want to kill the flood? Because we all know how easy it is. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, Feels good. If I could go back and find the clip of it, you know, me and you fighting, I could just put it like right here. I think I have the clip somewhere where you oh, email me. It. me. Oh, be good. God. I don't even. Yeah. <laughs> I still can't believe that. That was back in, that was back when you used to ramp. I was talking about this with someone the other day. You remember Fortnite where you used to like you'd see someone and you just double ramp at them yep, like yep. like side by side ramps and just like because everyone was a hunter back in the day. Now everyone builds into a box, man. The game's not fighting anymore. The game's not about shooting anymore. It's about editing. And it's wait, people don't build themselves into a one tall one by one anymore. I like it's just not the same, man. Oh, all yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> that's what you jumped in on me. I remember. Yeah, look, I thought I was so safe. And all of a sudden, Drunky comes ramping up, jumps in, uh, which was that was look, the, that was those were the glory days, though, man. Where everyone was not afraid of ramping at people. Everyone was a hunter. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, I'm still not afraid. Flood. I'm into it. I still push people. You watch me. I uh, like that. Though. Everyone. Oh, man. Look, I don't know. It's just, not it's, the, I don't know. I, just not to sidebar us, but someone made the comment about how like everyone now is just so campy and sweaty. And I brought you up. I was like. I remember back in like season one, season two, people used to like just build up in one by ones and like uh, just camp. That's always I was been trying a thing. to heal, bro. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. I thought it was nice. Look, it brought us together. Now, all these years later, we have a, uh, a podcast. The no, many, many true, years. But I mean, like, and there needs to be a balance of that, like hiding versus aggressive. Like that, that there yeah. needs to be some of that. It's just like everything is a box now. Everything is about boxing now. Now, the, I, we talked about like, I think two podcasts ago where we were talking about the turtle meta and like they definitely have to do something where to shift the tur turtle meta. Now, you actually had an idea. Oh, and the I want to talk about your idea. You fixed all the Fortnite. Oh, do you remember your idea for fixing? Yeah, I do all remember of this. You were hundred percent fix Fortnite. It's the, it's such an interesting idea, and I love. I wanted. I want this as an LTM just to try it. Look, oh my god, this is an interesting idea. Anybody here, like, clip this moment on YouTube. Comment like the timestamp because this is going to save Fortnite sent over to Epic. Mm -hmm. We need a mode where you only you have a limited amount of builds. No more farming. You don't farm builds anymore. You just zero build. farming. You just drop in the game and you you have 10 builds. Now, is the 10 builds important? No, it could be 15. It could be 20. I don't know. But you have a set number of builds that's relatively small, right? Mm -hmm. And so on your, you only have, let's go off the idea that you only have 10 builds. You have 10, you can build 10 structures. On Assuming your it's 11th, all wood or it doesn't matter what it is. All wood, paper. all metal. You can change if you want. I don't know. You know, this is a minutia. This is just like, we're getting into the, what it means. So when you're building, you have your first 10 builds on your 11th build. Your first build gets recycled and deleted off the map. And now you place your 11th on whatever type of structure it is. Mm -hmm. You place another build. Now your number two build gets deleted. And now you have your 12th build. So you okay. can have this constant flowing of builds where you never run out of mats. You never run out of what you need to get through a situation, but you aren't able to endlessly just build up into the sky. Because it's not resource-based anymore. So yes. it doesn't matter how many resources are on the map. It doesn't matter how many resources you have. It's only based on your personal count of how many builds, which means you can only build a tower so tall. You yep. can only build a ramp so far, et cetera. And you've got to choose how you want to build it. 
Yes. I, and again, I was laughing Oof. immediately because you imagine just like the current tunneling meta because it would be like a caterpillar <laughs> moving across because yeah. it would disappear behind it. It would be very funny to watch, but it would be great. And you wouldn't get the frame rate slowdowns of Endgame because you wouldn't have castles yep. of one by ones and, and little turtles meta built. It wouldn't be there anymore. So all of a sudden you don't have that frame rate slowdown. It's less for the game to keep up with. It's so good better for the servers. It Epic. might be a more fun game. I don't know. I'm really I would love to try it. We nailed it. Epic. Send the check over. I'm ready. You, dude, you it. nailed it. That was such a good idea. When you said that, I was like, oh, wow. Like, it's kind of a it, it's it melts my brain a little bit, but in a way that I like it. I think yeah. I, I think it might be really fun. Yeah, I would, I would love to at least try it. Maybe it's a horrible idea in practice. Maybe it's like bring it in as an space. LTM so we can try it because I think yes. it's genius. And just call it LTM drunky mode. I don't you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just plug Creator me. Code drunky. Creator code drunky. <laughs> <mode>. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be beautiful it's the future of fortnite i, I developed Woo. it for you all of it yeah you have to program nothing i think it's a super smart idea <laughs> thank you fud mm-hmm. um, i just had to bring that up i was not gonna no. let this episode pass without us talking about that because i think the world I needs to know I, I love that idea man and like uh I, now it just kind of came up with it because i was like it's like you said you start thinking about more and more and you're like wait a minute it would great like there would be so much more to the game with that uh, well, it, you you have to make decisions based on a different thing and it's not about the time you spend farming you know what i yeah. mean that's mm-hmm. gone stop worrying about that that's old yes. i love that Ooh, i figured it it's out in, man it's pretty neat and the it's fortnite doesn't idea. do it god dang it we're gonna start a development team we'll make it ourselves let's get it let's get it all right let's move on and talk about the fortnite competitive development update this is a blog post that epic posted on april 26th Funny enough, April 20 or 25th is the day we're going to record the last podcast. Mm-hmm. This blog post is why we didn't record. They announced that they were going to put out this blog post. They, yes. they preemptively announced that tomorrow we're going to release a blog post addressing all of these concerns. Yeah. And we're like, oh, well, we, we should probably wait for that because that sounds like it's going to be a lot of big news, yeah. big changes. I don't want our episode to drop at the same time as their blog post drop that totally irrelevant. It makes everything we're talking about irrelevant because mm-hmm. it's going to be so many big changes and they're going to do yep. so much for the game. And I'm really excited about it. Yep. Well, it turns out uh, we got ourselves a little too hyped up as a community for this because they talked about a couple of things in this game. Uh, first off, they talked about the siphon and material changes. Mm-hmm. Um, Basically, when they talk about the siphon and material changes without reading in depth about what they're talking about, it said they're getting at that over time, players began to disengage in the regular core modes of the game and started stating that the game had gotten too intense to be enjoyable. The reduction of viable play styles in combination with this feedback was the basis of us removing the siphon mechanic and the material changes from the core modes. Um. And then they go on to really quickly just kind of sting you a little bit and say, for the players that prefer a sharper experience, what does that even mean, uh, of Siphon, we offer a always available arena mode that includes these Siphon and material cap changes. Uh, this was a pretty big, like I understand, but at the same time, I feel like you're you're not listening or you're looking at the wrong things, man, because if. It, Again, Never you know, again, we've talked about this before, and I, I kind of assumed this. Like, I, I mentioned this in the past, where I think, are we in an echo chamber? Because I follow mostly pros and professionals. Yeah. I play a lot. The people that I talk to play a lot, right? Like, I'm a streamer. So everyone I know streams and, and plays a boatload of Fortnite. And maybe for the regular casual guy, and, and there are 10 million players of Fortnite. So, like, maybe that's what they're listening to. And I guess that's what they're listening to. Which is fine, but this comes back to the same thing as voting for a drum gun return. You know what I mean? That they... they just because everyone wants it doesn't mean it's right. So like what's okay. good for the longevity of your game? Is this the right actual decision for the longevity of your game? Or maybe should you keep your proceeding a little more? Huh? Like, I don't know, man. It just seems the siphon's a weird one. Cause I do understand what they're saying that like being able to just get like 50 shields right after you kill someone can promote, like you can play a faster version of Fortnite where you can kind of pub some harder. But I think for them to just kind of take away this change, without seeing if they could balance it at all, just kind of like feels a little bit amateur, man. And now there's no way to play squads with it now. And yeah. they did it, and they took it out before they had the redeploy vans come back in. And, you know, and, like it's it such feels, a pain like that they did it that way. It just feels disingenuous because we all know why that Siphon mode got added to the regular game mode is because everyone started playing Apex. They threw it in. Now that Apex isn't a threat, they pull it out of the game. And it just feels like it's this like carrot and stick thing. And I don't appreciate that as a gamer. I like I, I'm an adult, man. I don't need that. Like, just stop doing that. Like, if you did, if you wanted, if you didn't want this to happen before, you should have done it. Yeah. And, or you should have found a way to adjust it because off the bat, this like slow farming stuff 
has got to end. Dude, because the slow farming. Been, you know, honestly, I could probably live without siphon if they would just bring the farming rates up. The farming 100%. rate is so freaking slow. It drives me crazy. I should not be able to knock down a wall, build one wall, and then be able to build. Yes. That's insane. It's just, it's, it's, it, it hurts more. The building change hurts more than the siphon. The, I don't even need mats to get dropped, but like, I should not have to like sit there for 30 seconds at the beginning of the match while people are shooting around me. And I'm just kind of hoping that I can like, just kind of outmaneuver for a second more just yeah. so I can have some builds. Cause like you want to talk about limiting play styles when you don't have builds, you have a limited play style, which I don't understand them saying that. And they, they have, they don't think to address or change anything else. It's just like remove it. If people are playing too aggressive, why don't you just, instead of having the siphon go into our uh, health, why don't you just have players drop minis? Drop two minis every time someone dies. Even we have one shields. Mini. One, mini. one mini. Anything. Just, just something. a little something. something. I did, there is a severe lack of shields and health in this game. It's harder than any other BR I've ever had to play. And if they, in terms if they of gave health, you, man. if they dropped more shields and stuff, then maybe that would be it's superfluous in arena mode. But this is the problem. Like they're, they're, it's, it's, it's the cross platform thing. It's mm -hmm. the competitive casual thing. They're trying to please 10 million masters because there's yep. so many people to play this game. And I get it. It's a huge game and they've got a lot of masters to please. I get that that's a hard balance to strike, but I don't think you found it. Yeah. Like, I don't think the balance has been found yet. I think you've got to keep trying. And that, and and just saying, sending us to developer up. That's we're not trying. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't work. Yeah, and I think that everybody in the pop up group settings, and even when the siphon changes came to pub, I think we're all saying like maybe fifty health is a little aggressive. Maybe that's a little bit too much to give back on a kill. But I wish. Have you started just... getting used to solos without siphon? Uh, I have some. I have subverted my expectations of the game. My mindset have has changed now. So I mm -hmm. guess that's getting used to it, but like I'm having less fun. It's yeah. just I'm. I, it's like I know I have to wash my dishes, or else I'm gonna have a dirty sink. Is like the type of it is now. I just have to yeah. sit there. I feel like I have more. I have farm. more bad games now, like more boring games. Yeah, like I've got a higher percentage of boring games. There are definitely games that are they. They are definitely more boring. Um, if you land at a weird POI where you have to fight five people and then you can't fight. I feel like I'm playing out the rest of my game because I'm low on health. I can't find any shields. I feel like I'm just playing out this game to give someone else my inventory. And like I don't have a chance to win the next fight because I don't have any kind of health. I don't have any kind of shields. And they think that there's all these options around the map. Like sometimes you don't run into mushrooms. Those are random. Sometimes you don't run into apples. Those are random. Sometimes the campfire you want to use has already been burned by somebody. So it's just like one of those things. It's like they need to increase the opportunity for me to win the next fight I'm going to get into. And that's what Siphon did. And now that it's gone, it's like, ah, it's, it's rough, man. Yeah. I, it's definitely a more boring game now. I agree. I, I feel like, as I say, it's a higher percentage of boring games. Like I still have games that are exciting. I still have games that are really fun, mm -hmm. but I feel like there's a higher percentage of games where I'm like, there's just nothing I could have done because yeah. I got into a fight and then I got into another fight and I couldn't do anything about it because I was out of mats or I was out of health or whatever. I and definitely I, I, find you can myself... only accommodate for that so much as a player. I definitely find myself having a little bit more fun maiming on people now where I'm like, I third party them and I'm like, oh man, I bet, I, I bet you wish you had siphon mode right now, don't you? Oh, don't so you? many times. I joke about that all the time. Every time I kill someone, I'm like, oh, I bet you missed the siphon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it, I feel like a jerk, but it's just the reality, man. Yep. Uh, let's move on to the next topic they cover in this. The stretch resolution and the field of view. As we all know, stretch res was taken out of the game. The native resolution sits at a uh, 80 FOV. Mm -hmm. uh, here are some reasons why they thought the default FOV is the trade-off that they want in the game. <laughs> it's varied in game and regions favoring low FOV and thus a closer view of the enemies. It's minimizing potential motion sickness in, for, in players further away from their screen. A, the further a player's head moves from the center of the in-game field view, the more negative the reaction. It minimizes jarring transitions when aiming down the sights. It has visual fidelity. And get this performance performance eh? performance you know why i finally went to stretch dress when i finally did it like three weeks before they got rid of it performance i got better frames man i got better Way frames better. when i stretched it doesn't make any sense what you're telling me also okay now granted there probably are players who feel ill watching stretch rest i get that and maybe yep. that's because it's stretch or maybe it's because the fov i don't know which it is or maybe they just had to get used to it and maybe maybe it could be the player's decision as to what makes them feel sick maybe Mm -hmm. 
get out of here with that. That's <sighs> such a baloney. You want to give me a you want to get me closer to the action and get me like closer to the enemy? Give me a first person view. What are you doing? Yes. I I really dislike their explanation of why they want field of view. And just to give some context to people, um pretty much every game that is competitive, every game that you play lets you have a field of view slider. Pretty much all of them at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and most of them are set to 90 or 100 by default. Yep. The fact that Fortnite uses 80 um, is kind of a weird decision that it, it, it one, it favors people who are playing on TV and consoles. And when exactly. you're playing further away, yes, it, it, you do get motion sickness when you use a higher field of view when you're playing on a TV and you're sitting further away. But I'm a PC player. I'm sitting right next to my monitor. It's about an arm's length away. If and not lots shorter. of people on consoles are, are close to their freaking monitors. Yes, How many times dude. did I play on my NES? My mom was like, your eyes are going to get started. Like, like, Come on. <laughs> yeah. Are you joking? Like, ever... and if it didn't give them the slider, is... everyone's like, well, the explanation is, well, play, if there's a competitive advantage to be had, players will favor the competitive advantage version. Yes, Good. they will. That's their yes, decision. Give them the decision, bro. Yep. Give us the decision instead of As, just forcing us into this field of view that literally is, according to almost all the stuff that I've been seeing, it's the worst field of view we've ever seen in any game ever. Like, yeah. it's insane. You can't see anything whenever, you know, there's been people who have been able to get the FOV change inside of Fortnite to 90 and 100 uh, mm-hmm. by changing some game files. Your field of view changes in the game while you're playing. When you're on the drift board, you have a wider field of view. Yep. When you're landing, you have a wider field of view. So it is possible to easily give us a slider, but they don't want people to be able to use it because they want console players to be able to play with PC players and for the PC players not to have any kind of advantage. That's what they talk about when they talk about like advantage. They don't, the consoles cannot handle a FOZ slider. They can't do it. PCs can, but they want to be able to play together. And once again, the cross platform Cross platform is a curse, man. It's it a curse. Is, cross platform is a curse. Us. They need to get rid of it. They need to get rid of cross platform. That's what they need to do. Yes. And they or will have never a cross do play it. mode or some shit that doesn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where for so that way I can play with my friends for fun. That's fine. I want a casual cross play mode, but it like just give me the, who cares? Yep. Any competitive modes? Yeah, sure. That's a different thing. But that cro- competitive modes should not have cross play. Yeah. And I just think their reasoning is very like hypocritical because the thing there are already things in this game that are optional to give you a, compa- a competitive advantage if you want people starting to use the colorblind modes in the game so they can see deeper in the storm. That's mm-hmm. an optional competitive advantage. Uh, being able to turn on aim assist, that's an optional competitive advantage. And I'm not trying to open up any debate on that. I'm just saying that there is an option to turn on or off. Oh, dude, sound assist is like God Sound tier. assist. I'm it's loving sound optional... assist. I turn sound assist on. Oh, I can still hear anything and I know which direction shots yes. are. Come on, baby. I'm in love with that. All these I things are go optional things. So I don't know why we just can't get a slider. I don't even need a slider. We may be like, you want to use 80 or you want to use 100. You choose. Yeah, give me two options. Give me three yes. options. Give me something. Give, me, give us options. And like... And get over crossplay parity in terms of arena. If you want crossplay, is for fifty v fifty modes. That's what crossplay is for. Yeah, you know what I mean. I want my playstations, my Xboxes, my PCs to all be able to have a laugh in Avengers Endgame mode, yeah. not in competitive arena modes. Like, get over that. Like, you need a World Cup and you need a console World Cup. Sorry, guys, that's just the reality. I hate yeah. to tell you, but that's the reality. It is the reality. There's and- just there's too many differences. There's too many structural, real differences they're trying to overcome and it doesn't make sense to you can't overcome them all you just can't and, and like, not here's the oh. brass tax for people and it sucks that you if you can't afford a pc to play competitively but that's just the way of the world a 400 dollar ps4 should never is never going to be able to keep up with a three thousand dollar pc it's just not going to happen and that's just the reality of it and i'm sorry to the players who like they can't afford it look i've been it i've been there i i've had not been able to buy a pc when i want to but that's just the way it is. And I've got no problem. Like, why, I don't even understand why they would have a problem with that. Compete against other console players. Yes. Like just have a separate console arena. Like mm-hmm. I don't see why that's an issue. Like arena mode should be console arena, PC arena. Yep. World Cup, PC World Cup, console World Cup. And that's fine. Then at yep. least they're all on the same page. They I don't get an FMB setter because their systems can't handle it. Cool. That makes sense. That's okay. Yep. I get that. But like the the trying to make parity and and competitive advantage decisions based on PC versus console, come it's rough, on, man. that's it's just so rough. insane. It's not real. It's just not real life. Like they're trying to live in a different world. Yep. And the people who get hurt the most by that, honestly, are like the PC players because like 
people who play on PCs are used to all these different things from other games that are not being implemented in Fortnite. And it's, it's very frustrating as a longtime PC player not to be able to do these things, which I've done without even thinking about it, without even questioning it should be a thing. And now it's not a thing in a game that I dig. And it's, I hate it, man. I just hate it. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the uh, Fortnite. Another blog post put out the Fortnite competitive game integrity. Hmm. Uh, after the first week of the open qualifiers, uh, Fortnite came out with some tournament integrity actions that they were taking. Just to briefly go through a uh, few of them. 1,163 accounts were banned from competitive play. 48 accounts were banned from account sharing for 14 days. Eight accounts were banned from teaming. And one account was permanently banned from Fortnite for using cheating software during the semifinals. Uh, several players have been forced to give their money back, or which I don't even think they probably got sent to anyways, but they were disqualified from their earnings. And then they move into the cheating detection. There has been... Um, for, Fortnite has a system to detect when people are teaming or not, and the system definitely is not the best thing in the world. Mm-hmm. When no you're system running, is. I get that. That's fair. Yeah, it, it's hard. To, it's Teaming is a hard thing to deal with in real time in an open qualifier setting. And that brings us to week three of the World Cup solo qualifiers, <laughs> where a gentleman by the name of Ziff has set the pro community above for his accused of teaming with two other players inside of the game. Mm-hmm. These two players landed at the pirate um, camp outside of Volcano, kind of southeast of the volcano. I'm sorry, southwest of the volcano. Uh, they were both respectively at 31 points and 21 points. Ziff was in the high 50s. And they did some very uh, competitive moves that seemed like they didn't belong in the for the top three thousand of people in the competitive yeah. community. You're you're in the high end of things, and they're playing maybe not. Yeah, yeah oh, no, so, playing like that's not going to get them where they were. How's yeah, that? Yeah, no. And so <laughs> I don't know. What's your take? Do you think? You know, you, I've, you've, you've kind of found out about this thing. I've watched some videos on it. The the evidence seems to be pretty apparent, but one of my think- favorite ones was I think there was like a, a screen cap of a conversation. I don't know if it was real where he didn't know that they anyone can see the replays. Yes. He didn't know that the, the replays were public when, yep. when you're in that level. Those all those replays are public. So mm-hmm. anyone because someone came to him was like, I want to make a montage video or something. And he's like, wait, you can see that. Yeah. Um, Like that. Big guy. <laughs> so Big funny oof. to me. I mean, it seems pretty clear to me that this is not correct. Yeah. Like, it seems pretty obvious. It's always going to be hard to say and judge this fairly, I guess, but it seems pretty obvious. It's pretty uh, huge, too. Getting two kills off drop, my, you know, in terms of points, it might not seem like that much overwhelmingly. Because he dude, was it, the first the couple points. games, it was tight, though. Like, those points yeah. matter. Every point matters. Every point is the difference between money and not money. Yeah. And that's the whole thing, man. This is a money tournament. People are going to do some dubious stuff. You know, yep. it's going to happen. And I don't know it how, I don't think there's a full think, way to compete against it. I think I like the man that got second trying. place. That's $4,500 up for grabs for him. Yeah, man. Along with qualifying for World Cup, which puts him at like a $58,000 guaranteed just for being in the World Cup. Um, additionally, I think what the big thing is, is not the points. I think it's more so the loot because he lands at a very like tight loot spot where you don't get a lot of chess. Yep. So he gets full shields. He doesn't have to waste any kind of minis or any kind of pots that he finds yep. there. Uh, Epic's been very slow to address this. They had this blog post I read. This is from two weeks ago. They've yet to address this case, but this has not stopped the pro community from just absolutely like losing raging, their losing yeah. their mind. And rightfully so, because they're all practicing as hard as they can. And Epic has really just been like, eh, we're going to talk about this. We're going to investigate Well, and there's been it. some we'll other instances of, of pros who've been, like, banned for things that didn't make any sense that they were banned for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of the weird stuff with streamers and, and call-outs and stuff that have happened. Like, I think there was, anyway. It just doesn't make sense. Like, they're going to have to get real tight with this. And I, like, this is a good thing that they banned this many people account sharing got there was repercussions for that people are having to not get or they're not getting the money they thought they were that's Mm -hmm. all good i think what they're doing is good and i think they need to set a a firm standard here and do just do their best like this is a rough situation doing an open qualifier that you can do anywhere in the world and not have controls on it so i get that that's hard to do and i think that they're doing their best i like that they're very public about the banning i think they need to be um this zip thing i think they need to figure out what they're going to do faster and announce it faster but um 
I think they're, I don't know, it's a rough position for them to be in, honestly. It really is. And I feel like, I feel like they put themselves here by having these open qualifiers. I don't know how you do a, a tournament that's not open qualifiers. Like, who do you decide that comes besides invite? And the community has been really mad about like the invite tournaments that they've been doing where, um, you know, someone like me gets invited where it's like, oh, okay. You know, like he's good at the game, but like, is he good at the game? You know what I mean? Like, You're great at the game. You killed no. the flood one time. I remember. I have killed the flood. You are I mean, on you, the I list. You, great. you must be great. I am great. Thank you. Appreciate you know. that. Got you, uh, so no, I think Epic's in a really bad place with these open qualifiers. I think that the competitive integrity of Fortnite has been. I think a it's just a, it's a, it's, a, it's a rough one to do. Like open qualifiers are hard to do. That's why they're not often done this way. And like there's a reason that they're not often this way. I think it's ambitious, and I yeah. want them to. I want to reinforce that they're doing it, and I like that what they're doing in terms of putting stuff out about banning. And I think they got to stay aggressive with that. But they need to get firm policies in place, yeah. and maybe like a judicial team for how they judge teaming, for example, and they so they can be quick yeah this step this is definitely something where they should have had a, a policy like a quick action response to this like they should have had a system in place where if they see this overwhelming evidence they could very quickly like stamp it out and address it because them just kind of sitting on it and i know they're trying to like you know dot all the i's cross all the t's get make sure it's yeah, right which i want but I, but the longer they wait, the the more everyone's going to get like disencouraged to do this type of stuff. Yeah, and or, and okay, so this this is like this is a few of the topics that we've discussed already from every update patch or whatever. They seem like they're their competitive scene. They don't seem to care that the competitive scene is mad about mm -hmm. anything. Um, and I and even their blog post basically said this is for casuals. Um, but even if you oh, I got the problem theory, is man. your casuals are all going to be really happy and that's great but for the longevity of your game keeping people on twitch big streamers keeping pros playing in big competitions etc those people will keep it's basically an ad for this game for eternity yeah you need that you, you, that's what keeps the game relevant for the rest of time mm -hmm. not just casuals who will slowly drift out of it and not really care because they're not seeing it in their faces they're not seeing big money tournaments mm -hmm. they're not seeing pro players with a hundred thousand viewers or whatever they're like they're not seeing that kind of stuff on twitch on whatever which is one of the biggest gaming viewership platforms right like that's an ad for you to be the number one game you yeah. want to stay there on twitch bro and the way you do that is listen to your freaking competitive hardcore community they need to be happy man like that's man, where you're gonna I got that's how you idea. stay number one man i got this idea about open qualifiers and epic's never really been one to really enjoy uh kind of going to the dance with like esports organizations right they've never just invited people because they're as part of organizations uh they kind of like keep them at an arm's length and then they have the open qualifiers i feel like that epic wants a new competitive blood coming into the scene all the time so that someone doesn't get too big of a microphone because if someone has too much of a platform, they can start influencing the community over what Epic does. And I feel like the open qualifiers are part of this like grand scheme to kind of control who has influence inside the community um, because they just, they're not very responsive publicly uh, to com the com uh, competitive scene, man, like at all anymore. And they used to be at the beginning and it feels like the competitive scene kind of got a little bit too big for his britches. And now they're like, they're trying to like hip check them back into like, okay, stay in your lane. Stay in your yeah, lane. I mean, it's very possible. <laughs> it's very possible. I don't yeah. know. It's just such a weird, there's just so much to, there's so much to work out. Like it's such a ball. Like it, it's crazy. There's, there's so many threads on this game that is Fortnite that we all love sort yeah. of. I mean, I still love it. I still love this stupid game. I do. I can't get away from it, man. It's just like I want to play other stuff sometimes, and then I, I'm playing. And I'm like, yeah, but Fortnite feels so much better. Like it just yeah. feels good when you're in it. And I'm like, God, they got me. It they does, got me, man. It's such a good game. Like it's got such good stuff, and it's had so many good moments, and I love it so much. Mm -hmm. I just I want the best for it. Like it's like my child, and I want the best for it. <laughs> and I'm not always sure that the current babysitter and or parent is doing <laughs> the best job. Always, I love sure. you, Epic. Sorry, guys, but like, come on. Yeah. Just keep right. working. I know you're. I know you're. I know you're working overtime, but a lot of hours, hundred hour weeks. I feel yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Fortnite Update. Episode thirty four is in the bag. Uh, you can find me Drunky on Twitch.tv forward slash Drunky and my co-host the Flood. Twitch.tv forward slash the Flood. 
All right, if you guys haven't liked or subscribed to the video, uh, go ahead and do so, or subscribe to the channel, not the video. What are you doing with your life? You haven't done that yet? Come yeah, on, drop guys. a like. Get those notification settings on. Get in here. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week for episode 35. Uh, bye, everybody. Bye, guys.